Hello everyone, Wally here, and today I was scouring across a couple news articles, and I came upon some stuff that I thought you guys would find interesting. Today on the Wall Street Journal it was announced that Activision is looking to implement an optional subscription fee service in the next Call of Duty series. Um, if you guys want to check out the article for yourself, I will put a link below so you can go ahead and do that. So like I said, this subscription package will be fully optional to players. Uh, multiplayer will be fully accessible to all players regardless of whether or not they have the package. And uh, players who are paying for this service will in no way be given an advantage over players who do not have this service. What this service will provide, however, is uh, additional game content that's not found in stores or on the discs. And basically what that breaks down to is digital content um, that we used to see in the past. And when it comes to Call of Duty games, digital content is primarily found in map packs. So instead of paying the one-time digital download fee, which we were accustomed to in previous installments of Call of Duty games, this content will be automatically uh, downloaded and uploaded to the users through this system. Activision is yet to state whether or not one-time digital download fees will still be available to players or if the only way to get additional content is through their new subscription fee service. Another thing that uh, Activision hinted at was the uh, increased production of digital content so instead of just the original two to three map packs that we are customary um, to seeing in previous installments uh, players will get a release of far more regular additional content. Uh, in addition to this, Activision is also looking to implement an in-depth statistical tracker system, something that has been akin to Wall Street. And uh, if you guys are not familiar with Wall Street analytics, they go far beyond anything that we're used to seeing uh, in video games, especially when it comes to statistical uh, information. Uh, even though Black Ops in particular was a great advancement in statistical uh, tracking and data, this will go far beyond it and I'm uh, interested to see the really the implications of this and, and kind of how it affects the community and how much information it can provide to player on becoming a better player themselves. So uh, Activision is yet to state a specific price range, however they're saying they're looking to be less than comparable online entertainment services and the benchmark that they're using here is Netflix which ranges at eight dollars a month so looking to be somewhere below that level it is interesting that Activision is comparing itself to Netflix when the more realistic comparison would be to the World of Warcraft model that is implemented by Blizzard uh, Activision subsidiary uh, partner and um, even the article itself makes the same comparison as me and, and I believe um, that the implications of providing such a system are far reaching far beyond uh, the Call of Duty series in itself and uh, possibly even reaching beyond the first person genre as a whole because if we look at uh, what World of Warcraft had done to the gaming industry it completely changed the, the ideal of a pay to play service. Uh, Pre-WoW pay to play was considered a niche market something that could only um, be accessible to the hardcore gamers. Only people whose primary source of entertainment was gaming would uh, you know look to pay fifteen dollars or more a month for a service uh, however you know WoW was WoW was extremely successful in capturing that casual market and now has over eleven million players who are paying uh, fifteen dollars a month or roughly fifteen dollars a month uh, for that service and I believe what's going on here with Activision is not just they're looking to um, import an additional service but more or less testing the waters to see that if an additional system such as that WoW uses will be accessible in the first person market and if Activision finds that this is a successful endeavor and is financially successful and, and people are willing to pay for this I think we're going to find that down the road um, these services are no longer optional for people who wish to play multiplayer but instead mandatory and uh, if we look at Call of Duty over the last five or six years, they've been the major trendsetter in the first-person genre. Uh, you want to look back to Call of Duty 4 when it began to implement things like creating classes and uh, additional RPG elements into shooters. That has now become uh, almost a standard in the industry. I mean, if you look at all major titles, they have at least some form of RPG elements now merged into the shooter to give that player the sense of progression. Uh, you know, even Halo, which I would say is its strongest counterpart uh, to the Call of Duty franchise now with uh, their newest series, Halo Reach, kind of has similar RPG elements with the class abilities that kind of give people a different way of playing the game. So uh, I don't think it's too outlandish to state that, it, that if Activision is 
you know, successful in this endeavor, then we're going to see these subscription fees become a standard across the board within uh, the first-person shooter market, and that uh, anyone who wishes to play a game online will have to pay a fee. Uh, I, I believe, you know, that in a lot of ways, the uh, MMORPG market and the first-person shooter market can't be treated the same, and that there are a lot of problems with trying to implement a similar system. Uh, the first problem that I see with this is, is just the idea of adding constant content because if um, these if these uh, new systems are going to become a customary addition to the game, I believe that we're going to see additional content added all around the board. And while that can be great for the player making the game fresh and new and, and, and ever evolving, it can also create a lot of problems specifically within the shooter. I think that uh, the RPG genre lends itself a little bit more to having constant content added to it, you know, allowing for new quest lines to be added, allowing for new dungeons, instances, and also just uh, constant events around the world can just be implemented by staff members, which uh, works really well within the RPG world. However, if we're going to look at what's going to be added into the first person genre, uh, it's going to be more customarily attached to maps. Um, which is okay, I think that's a good addition, I think that will help the game to stay fresh and new. However, if we're going to see, uh, you know, items and weapons added in uh, later down the line and constantly, you know, imported into the game, that could be very problematic for what a shooter is because a shooter, when it's at its best, is a balanced game. It's a game where, you know, each potential class, each potential weapon has a counterpart and a specific strategy attached to it. And when the games start to deviate from this method, then there's really no strategy or learning curve really in the game. And it's more of just one tactic works straight across the board. And, and there's no reason to get players to continue playing, to stay invested in the game. And if, play, and if these companies want to make these titles in which players want to continuously play and, and keep, to pl keep playing, then they have to make sure that that balance remains so that players constantly have this learning curve, constantly have that sense of progression. But the problem is, is when developers make weapons and weapon systems and class systems within games, it's very difficult to assess how to perfectly balance that before releasing it onto the market. Um, every shooter that I've ever experienced throughout history has needed patches, has needed updates, has needed weapon tweaks to make it a balanced game. Even the most balanced games that I've played, I have noticed, you know, imbalances between certain weapons, uh, certain classes, and things like that. And I mean, if you want to look back to previous uh, Call of Duty installments, we'll look at Modern Warfare 2. There was the one-man army noob tube combo, which is still game-breaking to this day. There was also the 1887s, um, which they needed to tweak. I, I mean, the, there is a huge list of um, constant developments that a game needs to make. And, and the problem with this is that no developer is skilled enough at balancing a game and can can really foresee you know the multitude of ways that people are going to use these weapons to really perfectly balance out a game it takes time it takes time of of not only no matter how extensive the beta or whatever i mean even if you want to look back to call of duty 4 which many people consider one of the greatest shooters of all time there were still significant balance problems with the perks with the guns not a lot of people know this but in the beta uh the m4a1 assault rifle actually had the same damage output as the M16 and was an all-around god gun and absolutely game-breaking. They had to change it down the line. But the, the problem is is that, that these changes and these developments, it takes time. It takes time to see how these imbalances occur. Then it takes even more time to understand how to tweak them accurately to make the game, you know, working perfectly and make the balance, you know, as accessible as possible. So if they're going to be constantly adding new content it's going to be impossible for them to reach that level of balance and we may see the shooters just become this completely imbalanced smorgasbord of weapons that are just one just more dominating than the next and, and that's my biggest fear for this industry and uh you know additionally on additional note from a consumer standpoint i also um see that if, if all these games are going to become play to play then our ability to experience the shooter genre as a whole is going to be greatly diminished because I don't know about your guys financial um, positions right now but I personally would only be able to play one or two titles at the most if I had to pay an additional you know five six dollars a month to play the game uh, you know these are obviously gonna have some impacts on the industry and I think uh, the outcome of this new service is, is going to definitely have an impact on the industry as a whole. Anyways, guys, I thought you'd just be interested. Um, I'm definitely going to do an additional write-up on this. If you want to go check it out, I will throw a link down below. Uh, thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time. Peace!